everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing, and this is our technical video report for Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Uh, so the, the bulls got absolutely wiped out today, and uh, I think reality is starting to set in for a lot of people where, you know, they, they've been, you know, hoping and praying that the, the you know, the Fed was going to start lowering rates. And it, it's something that I, I've, I've, you know, been saying since we were up here that was that they're, they're going to be dead wrong on this because they're they're looking at the inflation numbers that have been manipulated through, uh you know, it's just uh, not even inflation numbers, but more of uh, let's just say they're they're banking on on, uh, on employment staying strong and inflation staying continuing coming down without looking at what where oil was because when we we were coming up here and oil was heading down, it, it was because our uh, the administration has basically drained out our reserve oils, uh, so they don't, they've never replenished it. So the thing is now that, you know, I've been saying for a while that the, you know, the Fed was caught between rock and a hard place, meaning that they never uh, started raising rates when the economy was doing uh, well. Their only concern was to keep uh, the stock market up and keep their bankers happy. And they did that for too long. And now we have an economy that is, uh, that's going in the, in the bad, the wrong direction. And the Fed is raising rates. So they got caught behind the eight ball on this, thinking that, you know, these this roses and rainbows, uh, you know, fictions, uh, story tell that they're reading was going to continue on. And the, the same thing goes with, you know, when we're, we're looking at, you know, where we are with inflation, because it, it was going down because oil was was coming down with it. But as I said, that was because we drained our reserve uh, oil and we don't have that replenish. And now we have oil back up to ninety five dollars a gallon. So they're they're not going to uh, ninety five dollars a barrel. Sorry. Uh, you know, they're not going to be buying back, filling up those reserves at, you know, when it when it, the price is 40 percent higher, even though they might. But in any case, oil is going up now. Inflation starting to go up now. And all these people that were hoping that the Fed was going to start lowering rates are, you know, are, are finding out they're dead wrong. And I've been saying they've been dead wrong. And I don't I don't understand how I was looking through it. Maybe it was just them trying to sell sell them the street, uh, sell, sell the, you know, the retail public on it. I, I'm not quite sure, but they have to be smarter than than what they were just showing there, because, you know, not looking at a chart of oil and saying that inflation is going to continue to come down. That's just silly, you know, because that's the number one reason why inflation remains high. When oil is high, it means that distribution is going to be, you know, that, that they're going to have to raise the cost on distribution. They're going to have to raise the cost on whatever type of debt they have, these companies. And now, you know, we're, we're turning around and I mean, in California, they just set a minimum wage for fast food workers at something like $20 an hour. And, you know, when, when they're doing this, yeah, it, it's good on paper and maybe for their you know, political career, but it's not sustainable because what's going to happen is you're going to get all these stores that are just going to turn around and just eliminate employees and make everything automated. And, it, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of like I'm, I'm looking at things uh, and scratching my head what the heck is going on. But in any case, this was my downside target that I've been talking about since we were here, that we could come down and test this 4216. If you look in the morning notes, that's the exact number I had on it. I said, if we get through it, then we're coming down and we're going to be testing this uh, anywhere between the 4200 to the 4170 level. And you can see buyers did step in. But the one thing that I was looking for was was going to be some bullish divergences on the daily chart. And you can see this, you know, we, we got the bounce, but it was just too short and too fast down that it never even moved the, uh, the momentum indicator. So right here, you know, we're, we're still going down. So most likely... It, the, the bulls are going to have a hard time getting above this 4335, but they need to do it in a time period that it goes up. And, you know, they could get up here. Who knows? But in any case, they need to, this momentum to start turning up to, to form bullish divergences. And that's when you're going to get your, your real sustained uh, rally. You can see this right here, bullish divergences on the daily. And, and from here, we, we just, you know, we, we screamed higher. And it, you can look at it even... When we go here, here's the low on this one. This went down lower, bullish divergence. This was the exact low in the market. So 
the thing is, I, I, I do believe that we're going to just be in a chop zone into year end. And, you know, eventually we're, we're going to form these divergences. But right now they're not there. So to me, I still think we got lower to go. But I, I do believe that it's very, very dangerous to be jumping on the short side. And my main reason is if you look at the 60 minute chart here, even with this, you know, the, the S&P going from 43.34 down to the 42.10, uh, area, we we still have bullish divergences in place. So to me, it, it's you know it, they're shaking out the longs right here. And anybody who's getting aggressively short, it may work out for a time period. I'm not saying that it's, it won't. I don't know if you know McCarthy getting ousted out of the uh, the you know speaker seat if that's going to do anything to the markets. We have to wait and see. But in any case, we you know the. We're going to get some type of bounce, and it's going to be a pretty good bounce where we're testing these levels or even coming back up and closing this gap. So if we come down, if, let's say we chop around a little bit more and head down, and we, I, I would feel I'd like to see you know us come down to this to the forty one seventy two level, and if we do, then I, I'm looking long because we're probably looking at close to a hundred and fifty two hundred point uh, rally on that. So, you know, I want to I want to make sure that the bulls are in place, you know, before jumping, because it, 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 the markets go down a lot faster than they go up. And, and you know, when you're you're trying to pick a bottom, you have to be very, very, very careful with it. So that's what I'm doing right now. And watching this from from the sidelines. Yeah, it would have been great getting short here. But, you know, we, we would we had bullish divergences in place. So if this didn't hold, you're going to be short going all the way up into forty four third oh three level. And. That's not something I want to do. So we're, we're watching this in cash right here. We're at support. To me, I think that unless we, we scream higher tomorrow and, and start testing these levels and we start seeing divergences, that's when I'll short. But if we come down and, and do it in a manner where we're going up and down, that's where I'm going to be looking long for a 100 to 200 point move to the upside. So we have bullish divergences on the 60 minute chart. And even if we look at the, at the 15, we have bullish divergences. So as much as the you know the, the market has gone down and as painful painful it's been for the for the bulls, we, we have buy signals on, on the 60s and the 15s. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring up was how they make these lows and where you get the chaos and confusion. And what that is is when you get the bounce up like this and and then we come down just as fast, but it, it seems like it's a it's a lot worse on the downside. But our last low was 40, 4238. This was 4217. So it's 20 points lower than this. And it, it's, you know, that, that that's where I'm saying it, it, it seems like it's very, very bearish. But from where we were, it's really not that bearish. And that's where, you know, they, they start confusing people where they get these big rallies, come down, take out the lows, but only take them out by a little bit. And that happens a lot on the upside when you're making a top. So that's really what I'm looking for right now. Um, you know, the bears are in control. Until the bulls, really the first level, they're going to have to get above this. Uh, I, I'm going to even go here. I'm going to say to 4260 before anybody's going to be paying attention to them. If they do, look for the reaction trade up to the 4300, 4296. Uh, on the downside, if the bears take this out, then, uh, you know, really, yeah, you know, there is support right here. It could be where we landed, but also could be coming down somewhere between the, let me just try to get this. Okay. So right around this this 41.83. So this is the area that I'm looking 41.83. If it gets in there, I may take a long shot. I'll let you guys know. But let's see how the futures play out tomorrow. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you guys in the morning.